Welcome to Daily Reading the Word for September 21st. I'm Jonathan Kinsler. Today's scripture reading is found in Isaiah chapter 6 through 8 and 2 Corinthians chapter 12. The title of my devotional is Stake in the Flesh, and we're going to be looking specifically at 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 7. Because of the surpassing greatness of the revelations, for this reason, to keep me from exalting myself, there was given me a thorn in the flesh, a messenger of Satan to torment me, to keep me from exalting myself. The surpassing greatness of the re- revelations resulted in Paul having difficulty with pride. Now, if we re- read the previous verses, Paul talks about himself in the third person as having a, um, a, a very much a visionary or even a, a time where he went into heaven. Now, he doesn't tell us much about what takes place there, but it resulted in um, Paul having great pride. Um, so, we need to understand that this was given to him to keep him from exalting himself. And it's actually repeated, that idea of to keep from exalting himself. Those who receive great gifts from God are vulnerable to pride. We see this in the letter of 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 12, where Paul admonishes the Corinthians for having such an attitude. He says, now I mean this, that each one of you is saying, I am of Paul, I am of Apollos, or and I am of, of Cephas, or I am of Christ. And the reason that they're being, the Corinthians are dividing themselves off by those that they are following. So one, like by the giftedness even of their leadership. And so it has a way of uh, resulting in elevation of one over another. Um, In 8 verse 1 of 1 Corinthians, Paul says, Now concerning things sacrificed to idols, we know that we all have knowledge. Knowledge makes arrogant, but love edifies. So you see that in terms of even gifts of knowledge, uh, which is what the Corinthians seem to be very much concerned with, can produce pride. And if Paul had this visionary experience in terms of going to heaven, this knowledge of, of heaven could and this giftedness could produce in him and did produce in him pride. So as a result of pride, Paul's given something else, a thorn in the flesh we see uh, in the NASB. We cannot be sure what this thorn in the flesh was, but the Greek is more literally a stake. And the reason why it's better um, a stake as opposed to a thorn could be quite small. Now it could be, you could have some thorns that are fairly large on rose plants, for example, but uh, and on some, um, you know, uh, types, different types of like cacti and that sort of thing. But steak refers to something that would be much bigger, like uh, even a nail, something um, that would be big that would cause even excruciating pain. And because it is in the flesh, it may be best to understand it as a physical ailment, perhaps a disease concerning his eyes. In Galatians chapter 4, verse 13 to 14, Paul talks about a physical ailment that he himself had. You know that it was because of a bodily illness that I preached the gospel to you the first time. And that which was a trial to you in my bodily condition, you did not despise or loathe, but you received me as an angel of God as Christ Jesus himself. Um, And uh, he talks about even in the next verse how you would have plucked out your eyes and given them to me. It's possible that he's describing something that um, he struggled with concerning his eyes. Could be, we know that there are many different kind of conditions people can struggle with in terms of their, their eyes and eyesight. But regardless, it was something given to him from God that made him feel weak. Now, why does this, why does this happen? Um, and it seems strange to us for Paul to be talking like this, that it was, something was given to him. This thorn in the flesh was given to him, and it's specified as a messenger of Satan to torment him. Now, here we see that, and we know that God divinely allows tests and trials for our good. In fact, remember Jesus is led by the Spirit into the wilderness for what purpose? To be tested by Satan, to be tested by the enemy. Now, he's not led by the Spirit to fall. He's led to triumph over Satan. But 
still led by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by by Satan. Um, and this particular message of messenger of Satan in 2 Corinthians was also ordained by God and, and has the specific purpose to keep him humble. Um, one commentator writes, God permits Satan to strike the apostle, but God turns the stricken Paul into an even greater instrument of his power. And we see in the ongoing verses here that God's power is more evident when it is expressed in our weaknesses. In 2 Corinthians 12, verse 10, Paul says, I am well content with weaknesses, with insults, with distresses, with persecutions, with difficulties for Christ's sake. For when I am weak, then I am strong. Now, what kind of strength? Well, in Ephesians chapter uh, Ephesians 6, verse 10, Paul tells them, finally be strong in the Lord and the strength of his might. We're to be strong in the Lord, not in our own personal strength. He's not talking about get strong physically, although that's not necessarily a bad thing. Um, but the, our strength is to be known and to be is to be characterized by being in the Lord. So Paul came to see the torment that he received from this perhaps a physical ailment, ailment, but this thorn in the flesh um, as a gift because it kept him reliant on the grace of God. And this is why one of Paul's major themes is, let him who boasts, boast in the Lord. Um, we see this in, in 1 Corinthians chapter 1, 31, and 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 17. So when you are weak, do you experience God's power working through you? And I think if, you, if we rely and we depend and submit ourselves to God, we know that he gives us strength. He gives us comfort. He gives us encouragement. He builds us up. We're better after we go through times of difficulty than we were beforehand. We may be changed. We may be not as strong physically, but spiritually in our character. God is at work in us. So when you are going through difficult times, do you pray that God would be your strength? And do you pray that he would have his will in your life? Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you that Lord, the Apostle Paul is a great example to us in that he understood that, um, Lord, his physical ailments were even uh, gifts from you. And so, Lord, we pray that we would also have that same mind not that we're happily receiving of such things, but the result that you want to work in and through these things. You work in all things your, for your glory uh, in us. And so, Lord, we thank you that even suffering is, can result in your glory. Help us to see our weaknesses as opportunities for us to submit and for your glory to shine through. And we thank you, Lord, that you are always faithful. In your name we pray. Amen.